Have you ever felt that there's an endless list of tools, marketing methods, and systems to implement in your online fitness business? Because I know I have. Every month there seems to be a new tool, a new system, a new platform that everyone is raving about. From email marketing, to TikTok videos, to reels on Instagram, to Facebook Lives, to ManyChat, and even SMS marketing. But all these platforms and tools take time to learn and implement in your online fitness business, and we don't even know whether they're gonna work or not. One marketing method that hasn't gone anywhere and has actually been around since 1978 and that is email marketing. That's why in this video, I want to talk to you about that exact tool being email marketing and see how you can implement it in your online fitness business to get more clients. Let's dive straight in. In a world of growing social media platforms and ever changing digital marketing methods, one thing has actually remained the same and that is email marketing. And let me address the elephant in the room. Email marketing isn't dead and it's not going anywhere. And before you skip this video because you think I don't want to do email marketing, it's just boring or it doesn't work, stick with me on this one because I think you might thank me in the future. This is because I think email marketing is even more important than ever because it's so, so important to own your own list. And what do I mean when owning your own list? So. Let's say you own a Facebook group or a Facebook community and it's got 500 members in there. Technically, you have that group, that group is yours, but you don't own the people inside of it because Facebook can take that group away from you at any time. They can shut it down and trust me, I've seen it happen on a group with over 30,000 people on it. It was just shut down like that with no reason. So again, you don't own that list, but you can use it but Facebook could decide to take that away from you at any time. Again, let's look at Instagram. So you have a following. So let's say you have 10,000 followers. Again, yes, you own your Instagram account and you have access to that. But if Instagram wants to take that away from you at any time, and that's a key part of your lead generation process for your online fitness business, they can. They can just take that away because you don't own anything on that list. You just use their platform. And it was actually only last week that one of my really good friends and actually my fitness coach had this exact thing happen to him. So he had an Instagram account with roughly around 16,000 followers and he used it for lead generation for his online fitness business. And he was very, very good at it. He came to his account and it had just gone. He called me and was like, can you see it on your side? And I was like, no, you, you've gone off Instagram. And that was very, very scary for him because he had no notification, no email, nothing from Instagram to say why. And he didn't know if he was gonna get it back. So again, I'm not telling you this to scare you, but I'm telling you this because to show you the importance of owning your own list, because if you had your own email list, you could still use that whilst you potentially get your Instagram account back. Now, for anyone that's interested, he did get his account back after three weeks. Um, so all is good there. So where do you start when it comes to email marketing? So there's several scenarios that could play out here. Maybe you don't have an email list and you've set nothing up yet. Maybe you have an email list, but you've let it lay dormant and you're not using it properly. Or maybe you have an email list and you're sending emails, but it's just not optimized and working out for you. So let's discuss these scenarios further. First things first, if you don't have a email list and you're not building one, start right now. And the first step is finding an email provider to use. So I highly recommend using ConvertKit just because of how simple it is and the user interface is great to use. But go with something that you like or someone recommends to you. Again, we actually have our own custom built system that we use for internal marketing and all of our agency clients. So once you have your platform and you've set that up, you need to start growing your email list. Now to grow an email list and ask for someone's email, you have to provide value. So you have to give them some sort of information that's valuable for them to give you that email in return. Now that might be access to your valuable Facebook community or maybe a valuable resource that you've got. But remember, it has to be something that your audience wants. So for a resource or say a lead magnet, you would need to have a simple landing page set up to be able to capture those opt-ins and send that lead magnet. Again, keep it really simple. There's lots of templates out there on ClickFunnels or lead pages or any of the landing page software, but keep it simple and don't overcomplicate it at the start. So once you start growing your list and people are opting in regularly for your valuable content, then you can start regularly emailing to this list. So again, start small. We don't wanna try and run before we can walk. Start with say two emails a week 
and build up to say five emails a week because that is optimized. We want to make sure that we're sending valuable content, but at the start, we don't want to just send volume and send anything. So start small and build up as you go. And a tip here for you is don't try and reinvent the content or reinvent the wheel. If you're already posting on Instagram or Facebook, take inspiration from that. Take the content that you've said post last Monday and rewrite an email around that content. Or you can just use that exact post and send it in your emails. Because remember, your audience isn't gonna see every piece of your content. Someone that sees your Facebook post may not open your email. And someone that opens your email may not see your Facebook post. So again, reuse your content and drop that into your emails. Next, if you have a email list and you have an email provider, but you've just not been sending any emails to it, maybe you've let it lay dormant for three months or six months or even a year, what we wanna do here is do a re-engagement campaign. Now, what a re-engagement campaign is where we send emails over a regular period for say 14 days, just leading with value again and warming that list back up. And again, some of you may say, well, I've not sent an email for a year, so will they not just all unsubscribe? And I'd, what I'd say is I'd encourage you just to warm that audience up and not be scared of anyone unsubscribing. And you may be thinking, well, what do I send in that first email? I've not sent any emails for months. What do I put in that first email? And your first email may be something like, and you can make it quite jovial and, and joke and tell a story, tell people why potentially you've not been sending emails. And that may look like, like, hey, it's Dave from Sevecta Media, long time no chat, but that's my fault, not yours. And then go into your story and lead with value. So with a re-engagement campaign, you probably wanna send an email a day for the first five to seven days, and then space it out every two days after that, all the way up to 14 days, just to really warm that audience up and make sure the majority of that list is seeing one or two of your emails. So in those emails, you wanna tell your story, you wanna be genuine, you want to offer value. You don't want to be offering anything or trying to book calls, just leave with value and really warm that audience up and let them know that you're back. A key part to a re-engagement campaign as well is making sure that you give offers for them to unsubscribe because again, we don't want to force that audience to read our emails and if they want to unsubscribe, we want to give them that way out. And instead of just having the unsubscribe link right at the bottom of the email, you may wanna actually call that audience out and say, hey, if you don't want to receive these emails and you don't want to grow your online fitness business, then the unsubscribe link is here. Go ahead and click it, I won't be offended. And this will be in the body of your text because you want to be open and honest. Again, we don't wanna grow a email list of say a thousand people but we get a 10% open rate. I would rather have 100 people on a list and get a 50, 60, 80% open rate. We want loyal followers, we just don't want a volume game. So don't be afraid to let people unsubscribe and call them out because again, we want to grow that loyal following, those people that really, really want to receive your emails and enjoy your content. So in a re-engagement campaign, just to reiterate, make sure you give plenty of opportunity for people to unsubscribe because this is what will clean your list out. And then going forward, you've got a really solid email list to send regular content to. Again, once you've completed your re-engagement campaign, then you can just fall back into a normal cadence of email sending. So if you haven't been sending emails regularly, get into that consistent process of sending those emails regularly and then send say two to three a week. Don't try and run before you can walk. Let's not try and send one email every day. Let's just get consistency with sending those two to three emails a week and keep that list warm and keep giving them valuable content. And the key is here is like I keep saying is really, really warm that audience up. Give them what they want and give them valuable content so you build that loyal following. But there is a caveat here. Whilst we always want to deliver value, we do also have to think that we need to make offers at some point in our emails. We don't want to fall into the trap of just delivering value all the time. At the end of the day, you are a business. So once you've re-engaged the audience, you do need to start making offers in your emails. Because like I said, you are a business, you're not doing this for free. So we don't want to just keep giving value, value, value. We do want to make offers, so those offers might be uh, to a setter call or a sales call, or that might be to join you on a webinar. Again, we need to look at those conversion mechanisms to make sure that we're not just doing all this for free. We are bringing people in and we are genuinely trying to help people and offer them value through your services. Remember, your online fitness business revenue is a direct reflection of the amount of offers you make. And let me just say that again, because that is super important. Your online fitness business revenue is a direct reflection of the amount of offers that you make. So again, lead with value, always lead with value, but make sure you lace offers 
in every element of your marketing, not just email marketing. So on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your lives, always be making offers to make sure that you're converting those leads into potentially buying customers. Again, so you have an email provider, you have a list, but you just don't feel like it's optimized and it's just not really working for you. Again, what I would encourage you is don't reinvent the wheel. Don't try and recreate content and make this amazing email campaign. Just start simple. Take really good content that you're doing on Facebook or Instagram and lace that into your emails. And if you're just sending out one-off emails like broadcasts, then what you can do is then send those emails out and review the data. Look at what the audience wants. We wanna review the open rates, we wanna review the click-through rates and see which emails perform better. Then when you analyze that data, you can improve your email campaigns by say if you send 10 emails over let's say a three-week period, what are the top three emails? in there and look at the headlines, look at the copy, what is working better and then you can use that information to really shape your emails going forward. You wanna try and understand what your audience wants and what your audience is reacting to, so what it's opening and what it's clicking on. And then you can really start carving new emails around those principles. Again, when it comes to optimizing your marketing methods, not just your email marketing, we want to really review the data. That's the great thing about digital marketing. We can look at the data and see what the audience wants and what it's reacting to. And there's no right and wrong answer when it comes to content in email marketing. Again, it's all relative to your niche and what they want. But one thing does remain the same when it comes to email marketing, and that is lead with value. And again, lead with value, be consistent with your email marketing, so make sure you're sending emails regularly, and then also lace in offers. So it's not just value, 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 it's value, value, offer, value, 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 offer, and keep doing that. Keep making those offers to grow your online fitness business because again, you are a business, you're not just doing this for fun, so make sure that you're making those offers and you have those conversion mechanisms in place to grow your online fitness business. If you want to learn more about how to start, grow and scale your online fitness business, then the next thing you want to do is check out the video I've got linked up here on software for online personal trainers. In this video, I talk to you about the software that you need and some of the software that you don't actually need to start and grow your online fitness business. So be sure to check it out and I'll see you in the next video.